This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. After several years of heavy use, a quality patio sling chairs fabric may need to be replaced. In this video, we'll show you the proper steps to sew up perfectly fitting sling replacement panels and how to properly install it in the sling rail channels of your chair. Follow the steps of this video for a fit like a glove sling chair. I'm Eric Grant and my wife Billy will be filming this project. Let's get started. After cleaning dirt and mold off the chair, it's time to take a few measurements. These measurements will be used to determine how much fabric is required and also will be used in the fabrication process for the chair. We will start with the length measurement. We want to start this measurement where we want the fabric edge to sit. I like to keep mine about an eighth inch or more from the end of the sling rail. Use a fiberglass tape measure and carefully follow the contour of the chair as seen here. When the opposite end is reached, that is your length measurement. And I also like to end my panel about an eighth inch or less from the end of the sling rail. For the width from sling rail to sling rail on our chair, we will measure from the outer edge of the channel, which accommodates our sling spline cording, to the opposite side's outside channel edge. For us, it's 19 and 3 eighths inch. Some sling chairs are not rectangular. Be sure to take a measurement at the front edge as well as the back edge along the width. If it is the same or slightly off, it's meant to be a rectangular sling. Use the smallest measurement as your standard. This patio sling chair is slightly different. The seat portion of this chair is not a perfect rectangle, but it is actually smaller in the rear. Also take a look at the backrest panel. It does not have sling rails on the sides, but on the bottom and the top edges. It is measured in the same manner from sling rail channel to sling rail channel, but it is also important to measure and write down the opposite ends size as you will want to duplicate the shape when making the new panel. Now let's focus on the back rest. The sling rail channels are along the top and bottom edge. We will measure vertically for our width measurement and horizontally for the length measurement. That is only because the rail channels are not on the sides for this backrest panel. Your chair's configurations may be different, but the principles are the same for all types of patio sling chairs. With those measurements in hand, yours will likely be different. We can now figure how much fabric we need to order from Sailrite. It's easy to calculate how much fabric is required. Typically, the mesh final fabric is 54 inches wide, so panels can be orientated lengthwise along the selvage edge of the fabric or along the width of the fabric. So let's go over both approaches in detail, starting with number one, lengthwise along the selvage edge. If, when you measured your chair's width, the measurement is 20 and a half inches or less from sling rail channel to sling rail channel, and you're using a 54 inch wide fabric, then you can get two up along the width of the fabric. To make required fabric calculations, plug your length measurement and the number of chairs into this equation. Then pick and order your mesh vinyl fabric from Sayorite. For this size chair, we can complete four chairs with only three yards of fabric. Using the length measurement you made on the chair, this measurement is taken along the sling rails. If the length measurement is 52 inches or less, you can orientate panels lengthwise along the width of the fabric, as shown here. If your choice fabric has stripes, orientating panels along the selvage or width will change the direction of the stripes or pattern on the fabric. To calculate how much fabric is required, plug your figures into this equation. The four chairs still only require three yards to complete them all. Now, feel free to use these equations for the required amount of fabric for your chairs. Pause the video here if you like. What type of fabric should I use on my sling chairs? The sling chair in this video is using a very tightly woven vinyl mesh fabric called Fifertex Plus. It is a very dimensionally stable fabric and does hold its shape almost perfectly. Why? Because it goes through a tintering process. Tintering sets the warp and weft of the woven fabric at right angles to each other and then stretches it 
and sets the fabric to its final dimensions. Some vinyl mesh fabrics have a blend of other yarns woven in the batch and often those blended yarns like acrylics and olefins cannot be easily bonded to each other setting the weave firmly in place. A fabric which contains a blend of PVC and other yarns does make a good sling chair, but as you can see here, using that type of fabric may result in a slight sag of the fabric, especially after heavy use. That may be desirable for some. If your goal is to keep the fabric nice and tight, avoiding much sag, pick a 100% woven vinyl coated polyester like our Pfeiffertex Plus. One more thing to consider when ordering your fabric from Sayerite is the weight of the mesh fabric. Let's just look at one brand when discussing the weight of the fabric, Pfeiffertex. Most of the solid colors and stripes of the Pfeiffertex Plus brand fabric are between 15 to 16 ounces per square yard and they are extremely easy to work with, both in creating easy hems and sleeves and also in feeding the fabric into the channels or grooves of the sling rail. However, if you get into some of the wicker weaves or basket weave designs, those fabrics are much heavier, between 18 to 25 ounces in some cases. Those fabrics look great, but do come with one disadvantage. They are more difficult to pull through the channel or groove of the sling rail because they are thicker. With that said, we have decided to use one of the heaviest, a 24.6 ounce fabric in this video to show that it can be accomplished, especially if you follow the steps in the video. Visit the Sayerite website and pick your fabric. You can use the link at the top left to help narrow your search results. In preparation for the disassembly of the chair and also to determine the cut size of the new fabric, remove the end caps from the end of the chair's sling rails. Do this very carefully as they may be very fragile depending on how old your chair is. We like to use a screwdriver and gently pry until we can grab hold of it and pull it out completely. We need to know the size of the sleeve that will accommodate the sling spline cording. Take a measurement from the sling's rail top edge to the lower edge of the sleeve, as seen here. In most situations, a chair like this will measure 5 16 inch. However, not all sling chairs are the same. This sling chair has a backrest where the rails are along the top and bottom edges and the sling spline cording sits very far back along the sling rails. Here you can see that the size of the sleeve that accommodates the cording is one and a quarter inches. However, turn our attention to the seat panel and remove the end cap and take a measurement of the sleeve that accommodates the cording and we get the standard 5 16 inch there. These measurements should be written down as they will be used to calculate the cut size of the fabric. But first, we will disassemble the chair to remove the old fabric. Disassembly of the chair is typically rather easy. Usually on the underside of the chair you will find bolts holding the sling rails to the frame. Remove these bolts completely. Cheaply made chairs are sometimes welded in place. Those welded together sling chairs are used for a season, maybe two, and discarded when the cheap fabric or frame deteriorates. Once the bolts are removed, the sling rails should separate from the frame. These bars on the back side are called spreader bars or tension bars. They, along with the bolts you just removed, apply the tension to the fabric holding it taut. We are working under our wire hung canopy that has been installed on this pergola. Want to see how we build that? Check out the link at the top right corner of this video. To remove the old mesh vinyl fabric from the chair, simply use a razor blade and cut the fabric down the center. The old fabric will be rather stiff from years of use. Wiggle it side to side a few times before you try to remove it. This helps aid in the removal of the old fabric. Using vice grips or pliers, grab the fabric close to the sling rail and pull on the fabric removing it from the groove of the rail. Do this for both rails. Then grab the old 
sling spline cording and pull it out from the old fabric. Our metal frame and spreader bars are still in great shape. They are made from aluminum, but they need a fresh coat of paint. We will clean any dirt still on the metal and then remove any loose paint. Then we will spray with our favorite spray paint, applying several coats as directed. Our new fabric and supplies have been ordered and they've arrived from Sailrite and we're ready to cut it to size using the measurements we took earlier on in this video. That's coming up next. Using the measurements taken earlier and written down on paper, the length, the width, and the slot measurements, those will be used to calculate the cut size of our panels. First, we will start with the cut width. Use this equation and plug the width and the slot size into the figures shown here. We wrote these measurements down earlier here for our chair. Yours may be different. After plugging them into our equations, you can see our example here. We should cut our fabric to 24 inches in width, and our finished size should be 20 inches in width. Want to test your figures? Using the old fabric from the chair, push the sleeves openings as flat as possible on the ends to be measured. Then lay the panels cut sides on the floor side by side and lined up. Now take measurements from folded edge to folded edge. Is it the same or very close to your calculated finished size? Our calculated measurements was 20 inches for our chair and our old fabric measures that almost perfectly, so our calculations are correct. If your chair is meant to be rectangular and one measurement is slightly off, use the smaller measurement as the standard. To calculate the cut length of our sling fabric, simply take the measurement you took along the sling rail earlier and add two inches for a one inch hem at the top and bottom of the fabric. Now we're armed with a cut size, width and length, and a finished size, width and length. Now we can cut the fabric to size. First, we must be assured that the cut edges are square. Here we're using an L-square to ensure that they are straight. Once we determine that and make any trimming that's necessary, we can use our width measurement for the cut size and measure across the fabric. Here we're marking the Pfeiffertex Plus fabric with a pin. Once it's marked at several locations, we can use the yardstick and strike a line through those marks. Once that line is struck down, we can measure for our cut length. This is the actual length of the chair plus the two inches. And again, we're marking the fabric at a few locations so we can strike a line across at that location. The Pfeiffertex Plus fabric can be cut with scissors. Edges do not ravel much. No need to use a hot knife. Next, we'll create the hems. Hems are placed along the edge that does not accommodate the sling rail. For us, that's the short sides, and we need to just measure over one inch and strike a line. No need for a double hem. A single hem will work perfectly here. We'll crease the fabric along that struck line and press it firmly, creating a slight memory. I'm going to flip it. Once it's pre-creased, I can take a hard object like the Sarah Camus padding ruler and crease it down well. If you don't have the Sarah Camus patterning ruler, you can use something like the edge of your scissors to crease it really well. Now we'll take this, since this is folded this direction, we need to do the same thing on the other short side. A one inch hem on the other short side can be done in the same manner. Fold the fabric under since the hem on the other side is under. That hem is folded under so it's on the same side as the first one we created. 
we'll use the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide like a table saw's fence. Because it's folded, it should stay right where we installed or uh, pressed the crease in place. First stitch, I'll do a little bit of reversing. The reversing locks the stitch in place. We'll sew a straight stitch, about a six millimeter long straight stitch. Then when we reach the other side, we do some reversing there as well. So far, we have only one stitch in this one inch hem, and it's about an eighth inch from the raw edge of the fabric. We will sew one more row of straight stitches, about an eighth inch to the right of that first stitch we just created, reversing at the beginning and the end of our sewing to lock the stitch in place. Then we'll repeat that procedure for the opposite end, following the same procedure. Our two hems are sewn in place. Up next, we'll concentrate on the sleeves. Flip your fabric so the hems are facing down. We'll be doing a half inch hem so we can mark it there, down both sides, at a half inch. This is the outside surface. Hems are facing down. For us, this is our long sides. This is a side that will slide into the sling rails channel, and we're marking a half inch and striking a line there. We'll do that on both long sides. Our half inch hem line is here. We want to mark two inches over and strike another line here. So we'll measure in a few spots at two inches. Strike a line through those spots. This will be our finished size when we're done. We'll, there'll be a final fold here. That two inch measurement was from the edge of the fabric. So we have a half inch and from this edge, we have two inches here. From this edge, a half inch. From this edge, two inches. So now, our sides that slide into the channel have a half inch line struck down and a two inch line struck down on both edges. Once that's done, let's confirm. Okay, if you've done it right, from the inside line, which we struck at two inches, to the next inside line, which we struck at two inches, that should be your final measurement. From here to here. And our final measurement was 20 inches. It's perfect. That's our finished size. At the half inch mark, we'll crease the fabric by hand, and then we'll crease it with a heavy object right along that line that we struck on the fabric. This is our half inch hem, and we're folding the hem under so that's on the same side as the hem on the two short edges. Okay, we've creased the half inch, now we'll crease it at two inches. Once it's creased, we'll flip it so that the hems are facing up. Then we'll crease it with a solid object just to be sure that it stays there when we sew it. Again, you can use some hard object like scissors or you can use the Sarah canvas patterning ruler to crease it along that edge. These folds will create the sleeve for the sling spline cording. Okay, this is their half inch hem. We'll fold it under. And we'll fold on that two inch hem here. So we need to keep that hem under as we sew. So where do we want the first stitch? I'm going to move the magnetic guide so that we put the first stitch so that the outside of the presser foot is right along this fold which will put my stitch about a oh, quarter inch inside this folded edge. That's my first stitch. We're going to have two rows of stitches here. So I'm going to set the magnetic guide up right there and this part is chunky. Um, this is a heavy fabric here this, so we're going to sew through it. Do some reversing there and then I'm going to carefully make sure that my hem is in the right spot. So I'm going to hold my hands back here and try to feed my fabric through flat and keep my fabric up against the fence as I sew. Okay, so I'll sew a few inches, fold it flat. 
we're working outside under our pergola, which has a wire hung canopy installed on it. Want to build that? Check out the link located at the upper right corner of this video. The Pfeiffertex Plus fabric we've chosen here is the heaviest we stocked at 24.6 ounces per square yard. Most Pfeiffertex Plus fabrics are about 15 to 16 ounces and are much easier to sew. We're sewing it with a heavy duty sewing machine. However, if you're using a home sewing machine, we recommend the 15 to 16 ounce Pfeiffertex Plus fabric. A, a second row of straight stitches should be installed right along that first one, approximately a quarter inch to an eighth inch away from the first. We'll do that along both long sides. Since we've already sewn the fabric on both sides with a single stitch, this time we can sew right along this rather quickly because we don't have to worry about folding the fabric. There we go. We're gonna use McLube here. This is sail coat and it's a lubricant and we're going to spray it on our rag and then we're going to clean the grooves of each one of these um, channels so we're going to insert the rag inside there stuff stuff it in there where the lube is and then just run it in the groove this cleans it and it lubes it for the insertion of the sling fabric Next, we'll insert our new sling chair spline cording into the sleeves we created, leaving approximately one inch sticking out of the ends. It can easily be cut with scissors. This track has two holes on this side and multiple holes on this side. The multiple holes are for the uh, bar stretchers. So we're going to insert the fabric in so that the multiple holes will be towards the inside. This is the outside surface of the fabric, so the fabric will go into the channel just like this. The hems are facing under. It's best to start with a long edge. So here's how it goes. Multiple holes, bottom side of fabric, top side of fabric. We start it in like this. Because we're using the heaviest of Pfeiffertex Plus fabrics, we're gonna pry the ends open slightly this will allow our heavier fabric to slide through here at the end where we will insert it. This is not required for lighter Pfeiffertex Plus fabrics. The end of the panel has a single hem and also incorporates the sleeve, so it is the thickest part of the panel and will be the most difficult to pull through the channel, especially because we're using the heaviest of Pfeiffertex Plus fabrics. Having difficulty pulling your panel through the channel? A trick is to cut some of the scrap fabric into a rectangle and fold it over the end next to the sling rail. Then lock on a pair of vice grips and use that to pull the fabric into the channel. Remember, what you are seeing here is the most challenging application ever. If you use a lighter Pfeiffertex Plus, you will not have this much difficulty. Because I can no longer reach the open end of the channel, I grabbed one of my sons, Silas, to help guide the fabric into the end of the sling rail's channel. He is ensuring that the weave of the fabric is not getting caught on the end of the sling rail's frame as I pull the fabric using the vice grips. Twisting the fabric as I am here will sometimes make it go through the channel with a little bit more ease. For some reason this always seems to loosen it up by pushing it over. Now how close are you to the end? Okay, about the same. How close are you? Ah, not bad. Okay, so take a look over here. Because we used the vice grips 
on a scrap piece of fabric, when I release them, any damage is usually done to the scrap piece of fabric. And our fabric is still in great shape, as you can see here. So we have one side done, now we just need to do it to the, to the other. So you see the holes are on this one, the multiple holes. This side has only two. Your chair may be different. Multiple holes go to the inside. So it goes on like this. This is the outside surface. So let's start guiding it through there. I noticed that I make some great facials when I'm pulling this fabric through. <laughs> wow, we got a lot of distance of that. We're going to move on ahead. Here's what it looks like when the fabric is fed in both sling rails. Up next, we'll reinsert the spreader bars. This is a bar clamp spreader, and the idea is that it's right now it's set up to be configured to be a spreader, but this end can come off and can be moved this direction on the other side, and it's a clamp. In our situation, we want it to be a spreader, so we're going to position it like this and secure it in place. So our first tension bar goes here, and as you can see, it is going to be under a great amount of uh, tension, so I need something to spread it apart. We'll use this bar clamp slash spreader as a spreader and apply tension very close to the holes where the spreader bar needs to be inserted. You need to be sure that the clamp jaws are very close to the fabric to avoid it from slipping out when the frame is put under great tension. Each of our spreader bars have washers that go on prior to insertion into the holes at each of the spreader bar openings. So we inserted those washers in place. Yours may not have those. Once the bar is in place, you can release the tension of the spreader. I jumped. First one's in place. Here you see two holes. Which one does the tension bar go into? Well, it won't fit into that one, for one, but this hole goes all the way through. It's for a bolt, so the tension bar goes through this hole. We'll follow that same procedure, positioning the spreader very close to the holes where the spreader bar, or tension bar, needs to be inserted into the holes. We'll keep the jaws very close to the fabric to helpfully avoid it from popping out when great tension is applied. The bar does not yet fit. We need more tension, but we're almost to the max. Hmm. It's close, but I can't spread any more than that with this tension here. I am so close to that, but I'm not close enough. So I'm going to bend this bar slightly. I'm going to go in the middle position. That table's not going to do it, so I'm going to do it on my leg. <laughs> that should shorten it up. Let's check. Yep, shorten it up beautifully, in fact. Probably too much, but we can pound that out. So I'm going to position it over the hole here, and then I'm going to release my tension bar. Bar spreader, not tension bar. Because it's going to spring forward. Ugh. There we go. Scary. Beautiful. My wife is filming. Every time I do that, she jumps. Because this bar was bent, we can take a rubber mallet and a rag to help prevent damage to the paint job, and we can pound it down and it'll actually spread it out. There, that makes it nice and stiff. This is the uh, spreader bar for the bottom, and you can see this one has a a bend outward and this one's more of a straight. This is for your butt. So wherever the seat is, that's supposed to accommodate for heavy people. <laughs> okay, looks like we don't have too far to go. We're 
going to put a washer on this. The other end has a washer. Need a little bit more tension. Now we can get in there. If we use the rubber mallet, we can pound it in place. There we go. Now I can release the tension. And our last one is here. Silas, being young, uses his hand. I would use the rubber mallet here instead. Good job. Look at that. We got it. Once the spreader bars are in place, all we have to do is reassemble the chair. For us, it's four bolts. I strongly recommend inserting all of the bolts and twisting them a few rotations by hand so that several threads are locked into position. Then, after all of the bolts are inserted by hand, use a wrench or a socket as shown here. Now the excess um, sling cord that's sticking out, sling slash awning cord, just take a razor blade and cut kind of at a V angle. And that should give you enough room to put the end caps back on. Our end caps are fairly fragile since they're old, so be careful with them. We'll carefully pound the end caps into place on each of the ends of the sling rails. That's all there is to it. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that we used. Another job done. <laughs> you will find many gorgeous, high quality, outdoor living sling fabrics at Sailrite. They will last for many years, even in the harshest outdoor environments. As you can see by the list, only three materials are required for a project like this. Fabric, thread, and spline cording. Sure, you'll need some tools and a sewing machine, but hopefully you already have those at home. The bar clamp slash spreader may be the only tool you have to purchase, but they are not too expensive. For your convenience, here are the calculations for ordering from Sayerite again. Our patio sling chair panels were sewn with Sayerite's Proflin PTFE thread in a clear color. As you can see, that thread blends with any color fabric beautifully. It's a lifetime thread that will never rot. However, it's more expensive than polyester thread, which is UV resistant, but not UV proof like Profilin. The choice is yours. Sarah carries both polyester thread and the PTFE for your next outdoor sewing project. It's your loyal patronage to Sarah that makes these free videos available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sarah, thanks for watching.